By the way, does anybody want to talk about Strud's choice of headwear for what is clearly a golf round to come? I think you like the fact that when you put that on, it pushes all this hair out the top, and it just yeah. looks like you yeah, just got might. some serious tough yeah. to hair. I tell you, what, the cart girls seem to come around a lot. I don't know why. You know, I, is it? I, I, I think the hair comes with the visor, doesn't sorry. it? <laughs> sorry. sorry, ladies. I'm married, ladies. You know, I'm married, ladies. Don't don't yeah. even get yourselves in that mind frame. Between that visor and those headphones, buddy, I'm not, I'm not sure, man. Hello, folks, and welcome to Got Your Back NHL Edition, brought to you by our good friends at Cross Country Canada Supplies and Rentals, where they provide equipment and supplies to all facets of the Canadian construction industry. But what sets them apart is their get her done attitude. It's a core value of their company. They've got it proudly displayed on the walls of each of their branches. They'll bend over backwards to get their clientele what they need when they need it. No excuses. Cross Country Canada, proud title sponsors here on Got Your Back, LeBron and Rashad. As we say, uh, good morning to the fellas. Uh, so we got Strud's clearly ready to hit the golf course. Uh, we got Pierre fresh off a plane and looking half asleep. And uh, and we got Dregs just, be, just being Dregs. How are we doing, fellas? Great. Perfect. Yeah, I can't. I can't concentrate with those sexy glasses you have on, Dregs. I know. Jeez, oh, I know. Oh, well, wait till you see the new ones. See, my my wife Holly has put me into this. She's got like seventy-two different pairs of glasses, and did, I'm I'm approaching five now. So, did you steal those from a Seven <laughs> Eleven? <laughs> actually, it was a shopper's drug slurpee. mart. It was a shopper's drug mart, and I didn't steal them, Struds. I actually paid good money. For yeah, them. you got them from the same place you got your headphones, Struds. Come on. Like, are you really going to be chirping here? Like, look at those things, you man. Got, I've been bugging you for months. You got a free bag of Easter egg candy with those. <laughs> that's like the, uh, and I can't believe I'm going to bring this up, but to this day, that's like the, uh, the vasectomy that I uh, ended up getting that happened to be in the back of a superstore. Bellas, don't know if I've ever told you Ridiculous. that story. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's, boy. You got yeah. a bag of frozen peas with that as well. <laughs> exactly. Two for one shampoo on the way out. It was a doctor's office. I, I, I was recommended to me by a buddy. So he gave me the address and I'm going to have my consultation jeez. for my vasectomy. And I pull up to the address and I'm in the parking lot of a superstore. I'm thinking, yes. what's happening here? But it went fine. Nice older yeah, fella. Whoa, All wait. is good. Are we are we really telling vasectomy stories? Because Do you have one? I do. Um, you know, you're told as soon as you get done, just go home, lie on the couch, just relax, put some ice down there, and you'll be fine in a day or two. I felt like a million dollars. I was like, no, no, this is awesome. You know? And I had some gardening and some work that I needed to do in the backyard. Oh, boy. So I spent like three hours like lifting stuff. Oh, boy. And I I was damn near bedridden for 10 days. That's a bad I, mistake. I thought the guy like left some equipment down there <laughs> inside. Like That's how bad it was. <laughs> that's brutal, Extender. man. That is absolutely brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness <laughs> sakes! Uh, so with my job, Pierre. <laughs> no, Pierre, this is Pierre hates this kind of stuff. He hates it. Uh, He's a hardened journalist. Yeah, exactly. Like, what are Pierre? What did you try to stay away? I'm just trying to stay awake over here. It's 6 a.m. Vegas time. Also, yeah. I can't believe I can't believe I don't have an hour to leave my room today and, and hit a blackjack table. I gotta. <laughs> when you leave Vegas after a while, you have to redo your routine. You know. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So with Mike Johnson unavailable today, we consider this an intelligent podcast, guys. We like to think we have intelligent discussion, and Mike Johnson certainly helps with that. Uh, so in order to replace his IQ level, we've combined struds and dregs, and we think we almost got there. Uh, so we're looking forward to uh, some hockey talk today. Before we get there, though, guys, um, really do want to mention, uh, it was a tough few days in our industry uh, over the last few days. Yeah. And I know, struds, you felt this in particular. So uh, Bell... Uh, with 1,300 cuts across the board in a number of different areas. A lot of our very good media friends uh, got hit yesterday. Uh, you know, our radio friends in Ottawa, in particular Strud's uh, team 12, uh, TSN 1260 in Edmonton uh, taken off the air. Uh, you and I have very proudly worked there for uh, a long, long time now. 
And this industry is a bit of a beast sometimes, you guys. Uh, Pierre, I know some friends of yours at The Athletic as well. Some very talented journalists and behind-the-scenes people, people that we really care a lot about. Uh, it's been a really hard few days. And we just wanted to acknowledge that, guys, and, and send our thoughts out to all those who were affected by the cutbacks here over the last few days. Yeah, no other way. It's a great way to put it, Brian. It's just a brutal week in the industry. You know, I have friends at both places and... Um, and I hope they all land on their feet, honestly. A lot of talented people right now available mm-hmm. and um, people who uh, have a lot to offer. Yeah. I, I mean, the only way you make sense of it is to hope and expect that all these good people are going to land on their feet because they are excellent at what they do. The talent pool is as deep in our industry as it's ever been. So collectively the loss will be someone else's gain you know whether they go independent or they they find new employers but at the end of the day it's uh, it's part of a sagging industry it's sad mm-hmm. yeah well said you know there's a lot of good people there and i think that they will find a new place and tell their stories and i think that's what yeah. fans really like they want to hear the stories and hear what's going on so uh i look forward to seeing where they all turn absolutely lots of good friends talented friends um a chance to maybe start a new chapter, and we wish them well. Look forward to supporting whatever endeavors they dive into. Okay, guys, let's get to uh, all things National Hockey League, and that will be the breakdown brought to you by our good friends at Kuma Outdoor Gear. I uh, was recently over uh, where they distribute their products here in uh, Edmonton. Well, actually, I'm in Calgary, but back home in Edmonton. And I got to tell you guys, it's it's fantastic stuff. Really cool camping outdoor gear from glassware to really comfortable uh, chairs um it's it's a great group i actually love the logo too i think the kuma logo is absolute fire uh so kuma outdoor gear proud sponsor here on got your back lebron and rashad as we get to the breakdown so the stanley cup final guys it's been broken down it's been beaten to death over the last couple of days we're not going to get too heavily into analyzing the series itself the question that i have for you and, and struds i'll start with you it's like every year a team wins a stanley cup and it's a copycat league and teams look at uh, that team and the way it was structured and think, ah, we should try and do that. If there's an element from Vegas that you think teams will kind of use in that copycat light, what element of it do you think it is? Well, I, I don't think it's something that has not been done before, but maybe we were getting away from a little bit. It was the size and depth of uh, Vegas. You, know, you look at you look at that team and you know, I, I would kind of put myself in a situation as a D-man, like which line would I like playing against? You know, and, and there really aren't any. They're all either, you know, they're rolling them out there. They're big. They're fast. They were, you know, physical for, for quite a bit going to the net and they had skill. So, you know, that that depth and that size, I think, is really hard. So I, I, I look towards teams that are, are trying to position themselves to win a Stanley Cup. I look around my team and if I see a guy under six feet, you know, I might be a little bit worried about what he can do in the playoffs, guys. Yeah, I mean, I uh, that is a tough part of the game to, to emulate um, only because those good big players uh, aren't uh, often available. Um, right. I, you know, I, I look at, at what Tampa Bay has done historically and, and, you know, we're quick to acknowledge the work of Kelly McCrimmon and George McPhee and, you know, the signing of Petrangelo and the trade of Mark Stone and obviously block- oh boy. blockbuster with Jack Eichel and, and the Buffalo Sabres. Um, so yeah, I mean that credit where credit is due, but didn't Tampa Bay do that as well? I mean, the mm. Tampa Bay Lightning historically are in that trade pool every single year, <laughs> adding pieces at considerable expense because they look at their window closing and they know that these pieces are going to help them win a, a Stanley Cup or at least contend for one. So um, aside from the size factor, I, I'm not sure that the copycat theme fits anymore in the NHL. Yeah, I, I think there are different ways to win. I mean, Colorado's team didn't have quite the same makeup last year than than Vegas, although there are some overlapping themes. And one of them is, you know, acquiring some some size on D. When Colorado went out and got Josh Manson, um, I chatted with Chris McFarland recently for a piece I wrote on the Vegas D because he said, you know, that was important for them to add a little more size on their back end. Um, and Dregs makes a great point. Tampa had monster D in those back-to-back cup championships. Mm-hmm. You know, Ryan McDonough still on that team and mm. Chernak and Hedman and Sergachev. Now, as, if Mike Johnson was on with us, he'd say, yes, big, but also good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> these are good players. And, that, and that's what you had on the Vegas D. 
but it is notable. Even, you know, even that surprising Montreal team in 21 that went to the cup final against all odds, they just played the heck out of their big trees. I like to call them, you know, yeah. Edmondson and Weber and, and Sherrod, et cetera. So there is something to it. It's, it's counterintuitive to what we're seeing in the game a lot, because I think some of the underlying numbers for the undersized puck moving D are often more favorable, but I think it comes down to, again, you know, sometimes you have players that get you to the dance and then you have players that get you across the finish line at playoff time when the game's a bit more of a grind. So that's, uh, I guess that would be what I'd take out of it. Yeah, a pile of Canadian players on that team too. And I mean, that that's kind of an old thing, right? There are plenty of players from all sorts of different countries that play uh, a style that traditionally would be considered that Canadian style, that robust style. But they certainly wanted to bring in players, Pierre, that could handle the game however the opponent wanted to play it. And it seemed to me they did a good job. Whatever each opponent tried to bring to them, whether it be speed, whether it be physicality, they were kind of able to handle whatever style the opponent wanted, weren't they? Well, I mean, you just look at the way Florida got under the skin of its opponents and beat out some major teams in the 65-win Bruins and then a really good Leafs team and then a really good Carolina team and some repeatable patterns by Florida, you know, driving their opposition crazy, spending a lot of time in their in the uh, opposing crease, doing all these things. Almost none of that was in the Stanley Cup final. I mean, yeah. they just could – They Florida just could not – do their thing, bring their brand to that cup final. And we know how beat up they were too. That's a big factor. But bottom line is, you know, Vegas physically imposed itself on Florida and that had not happened to the Panthers in their in their path to the cup final. Dregs, if you're the Edmonton Oilers and you're looking at Vegas hoisting the Stanley Cup, they came the closest, I would say. I mean, they gave them a pretty good run. I mean, it feels like there's not a lot of dramatic change that's needed in Edmonton. Oiler fans would like yeah. to see lots of change, but if you're the Oiler brass and you watch Vegas go all the way with that style and you know how <laughs> close you were, does it maybe tweak their thought process on, on their offseason and what they might need to do? Yeah, to some degree. Uh, you know, we're going to continue to talk about the cliche hockey trades, right? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, when's the last time there wasn't a hockey trade? I mean, there's an element of player basically involved in every transaction. But I do look at the, the Matias at home deal with Nashville as being a sound deal that was good mm -hmm. for both clubs. And I, you know, I don't think that Kenny Holland is going to be able to pull off something similar to the magnitude of that deal. But, you know, I, I think that there's an appetite to, to get better, especially up front. And if you look at Vegas, isn't this the constant sort of recipe for the Stanley cup champion, right? You know, not just, you know, we've talked about the size of their defense. Uh, Aiden Hill embraces an opportunity, makes the absolute best of it from a goaltending perspective. But then you add the different layers of the offense. Yeah, Jonathan Marshall so deserves the con Smythe, but it wasn't him every single night. You know, Mark Stone had a terrific series. Um, you know, Jack Eichel, man, I mean... I. He might have been the most imp impressive forward for me throughout the playoffs. You know, not just, again, because of the generating of offense, but how he embraced, you know, the two-way role that you have to be able to play with. And Chandler Stevenson and how – I mean, go down the list of all the players that found a way to be difference makers throughout the playoffs for Vegas. So who is that in Edmonton? Maybe they have some of those pieces internally, but that's what has to happen to, to go as deep as the Vegas Golden Knights did. And I think Edmonton is capable – um, there might need to be some more tweaking, but, you know, I think that that's what you do. You look around that room and say, well, who can be that guy every single game? doesn't mm -hmm. have to be the same guy. It can't be the same guy. Struds? Uh, are you talking about uh, Edmonton? Yeah, whatever um, you want. Whatever you want to bounce yeah, off that. Well, point. sure, the orders. I think when I yeah, when, when you look at it from Noda's perspective, yeah, you came close to being Vegas. I think the year before, you, you weren't even close to being Colorado. Mm -hmm. I think you were close to being mm -hmm. Vegas, but you didn't beat them. So I think there needs to be some tweaks, maybe in person, a little bit in personnel, but I also think it's about approach to the game. You know, you watch the Vegas Golden Knights. Of all the goals they scored, how many would you, would you call Instagram worthy? I think yeah. there'd be very few. They were very steady, and, and I think Dregs brought up Jack Eichel. You know, that guy held on to the puck, played really hard in both ends, set up his teammates because he drive the puck wide. I'm thinking of Alex Martinez's goal in the, final, the last game. Like, mm -hmm. just really structured, smart, 
hard hockey. Wasn't and, a lot um, of toe dragging, hey, buddy, for Michael? No. Uh, toe drags. I, 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 as a coach, I try to beat them out of my kids. Uh, <laughs> you know, from because they're in useless. a loving way. But, in a loving. No, 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 not in a loving way. way. No, I. That is not. They will die. The, the toe drag will die. And, and and like it looks great. Like we love. Oh man, look at the play. This is great, and we're all talking about it. You can look great, or you can win. I think Vegas chose to win. Yeah. Um, and then your point made about, you know, taking the hits. I think those are great. You know, how many times do you see Petrangelo take a punch to the face or, uh, you know, Eichel again, absolutely hammered by, I think that was that Kachuk, like all those things. And he just yeah. got up and skated away. Like we're here to win. Right. And so those are the steps that we're, we're talking about the last 5% of winning a Stanley cup. We're not trying to make Instagram here. So I think that's a shift that others have to, to mentally make up. And I, you can change one or two people, but that's a small percentage of your group. It's the entire group, I think, that has to really take that step. And that's Agreed. hard. It's a hard step to make, guys. Yeah. Any sense on the oil, Pierre? Well, I definitely think, in hindsight, uh, that that was the Stanley Cup in the second round. I mm-hmm. mean, in Vegas. And, you know, mm-hmm. Vegas is never going to come out and say that because they have utmost respect for Dallas and, and Winnipeg mm-hmm. and Florida. But that really was their toughest series. And, you know, to me, I just run 99% back of that roster if I'm the Oilers. I mean, maybe you trade Yamamoto, maybe you upgrade your top nine, but this is a good Oiler team that you just have to t- you keep taking shots at it. I mean, this is their team, and especially after getting at home, as Drake said, to me that was that felt like the final piece for me in their top four in the back end where, you know, hopefully Jack Campbell can bounce back and be a, a better insurance and net in terms of a, a teammate, the Stuart Skinner next year. But other, other than that, <coughs> I wouldn't be trying to do anything dramatic if I was Ken Holland. This is a good team. Yeah. That a good series of the second round. Uh, they've been taking shots at it. Final four last year, second round. It's a tough league, man. You, you just keep running it out and hope that it's your year. The other thing too. Dumb, yep. But that's the league that that's the league. Yeah. The yeah. other thing too about the Oilers is they, you know, they don't necessarily know what they need yet, right? So if they run yeah. back largely the same group, I mean, they were one of the best teams in the NHL for the last two months. Bring most of that group back, let her run. And then see what you need at the deadline and make a more precise move at the deadline. Because any move they make right, right. now, it's not going to be very precise. Uh, I, I definitely see the orders taking a wait-and-see approach. Uh, lastly, on Vegas, I wonder about Aiden Hill as he heads towards free agency. <laughs> so he goes in and and he does the job. And he guides his team to a Stanley Cup. And what a, what amazing timing for him. Dregs. Yeah. If you lead your team to a Stanley Cup and you get to hoist the thing and skate around with it... Are you a starting goalie? Should you be viewed as a starting goalie and paid as a starting goalie? And and is that the type of money he should be commanding and expecting, that of a starting goalie? Yeah, those are two different things, though, right? Um, Should he be paid as a starting goaltender? Well, maybe. But if that's the case, then he's probably not starting for the Vegas Golden Knights, you know, Mm -hmm. because they have other targets that they they want to meet and hit you know Barbashev is a player that was terrific for the Vegas Golden Knights you know he's going to be four and a half to five million dollars per year how does Vegas make that work Mm -hmm. Um, you know look Aiden Hill is going to draw attention if he gets to the open market but really you should have had Noodles Strud's best friend on the planet on Mm -hmm. the podcast to analyze. I called him before you know, I called both of you guys. He's not. Yeah, available. fair enough. <laughs> I, I'm always amazed. Um, and I learn a lot when I listen to, to Noodles or Marty Biron or go down the list of the, the vast goalie fraternity that are now analysts in the National Hockey League. Um, and the open criticism of Aiden Hill and the fact that, well, he's a puck stopper, but there's nothing. Well, isn't that the point? Aren't you supposed to stop? <laughs> all he I does is just stop pucks. Like, yeah, I don't care how he slides post to post and all of those things. I mean, as long as he keeps the puck out of the net, uh, that's good enough for me. So, I look, it, it's every player gets there. And this guy made the most of a glorious opportunity. He really, truly did. Um, so, again, how much does he want to stay in Vegas if Vegas affords him the opportunity to stay? And if they do, it's probably because he's going to leave a little bit of money, if not a lot of money, on the table. Yeah, I mean, I think Aiden Hill should sign whatever Kelly McCrimmon puts in front of him myself. Just stay put, and that's eh? not a Well, listen, Vegas Golden Knights were the first team in NHL history to win four consecutive games with four different goalies this year. And I'm <laughs> not taking nuts. anything away from what... I, no, I, I mean, I'm not taking anything away from what Aiden Hill did, but I, there, you have to acknowledge that there is some systemic benefit of playing behind that defense and that team. Yeah. 
Um, and, and, you know, if, if Laurent Brassois doesn't get hurt uh, in game three in Edmonton's, is he not the guy lifting the, the cup or not? I, I'm not saying I know mm-hmm. for sure. I don't. I don't, I don't know anything, anything about mm-hmm. goaltending. But I think if you're Aiden Hill in his camp, you know you're in a really good spot yeah. with that team. You're well surrounded. You're in for a raise no matter what. But I think whatever that raise is, I would absolutely sign on the dotted line and understand that if you chase – a bit more on the open market, your surroundings may be different. What's the player uh, agent so. perspective there, Strads? Well, I, I guess my question would be this, though. Like, what about Vegas? Don't they have, like, four goalies? They have Thompson, Hill, Brassois, <laughs> um, and then uh, what's the big guy? Leonard? Leonard, Like, yeah. they got all these guys. Wow. So, like, what I've do, never what they seen want? so many goalies passing the Stanley Cup uh, around on one uh, night. That yeah. was nuts. It was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. And, uh, Including and Sean, Sean Burke, right? <laughs> yeah, Sean <laughs> Burke. Burke yeah, he's yeah. printed out there. <laughs> Couldn't wait to get his hands on that trophy. So, and then Jonathan <laughs> Quick. And I'm going to assume that Jonathan Quick is probably is probably out of this yeah. conversation. But yeah. do they not have like? Isn't Thompson well, and, so, and so, Leonard so both the only under guy that? Yeah, the only guy that's certain to come back, and all those guys you mentioned, Struds, is is uh, Logan Thompson. He's the only one on uh, you know under contract and, oh. and who project, projects to be oh, healthy. Thought- now, Robin Leonard. Robin Leonard is under contract, but I just don't know okay. what he's going through okay. if we're going to yeah. see him again. Yeah. And then, and then both uh, Brassois and uh, Hill are UFA. Okay, well. now they're both up. All right, but they got. I, I thought Leonard was coming back. They got to pick and yeah. choose, though. I mean, Vegas is yeah. going to have a say in this too, right? They saw different things For from sure. different guys, yeah. and yeah. you know, I mean, they've got options. Brassois showed something before he was hurt, so I don't know how hard you can negotiate if you're Hill, if it's going to, if there yeah. is your priority to try and stay. Uh, okay, guys, uh, let's move past the Stanley Cup final and let's move to silly season, which is the draft and all of the trade mayhem that can happen in and around that time. Uh, I don't know how much activity there will be this year. What I do know is there are a lot of big names that are kind of floating around out there this year, guys. It feels like there certainly are. So we'll go one by one. We'll go Drag Struds Pierre. Uh, what's the name that intrigues you most on the trade front as we hurdle towards silly trade season and the NHL draft? Drags, who for you? Uh, Connor Hellebuck from the Winnipeg Jets. I mean, we, we've speculated openly on, on Pierre-Luc Dubois, it feels like, the last couple of seasons. Um, and, you know, the belief is that that's going to, to come to a head here in the not-so-distant future. And the Shifley speculation has been out there. And, and obviously, of late, we've talked a fair bit about Connor Hellebuck. I just, when I look around the National Hockey League, I, I can find a bunch of spots where I could see Connor Hellebuck being a good fit. You know, I've had L.A. suggested to me. We know Ottawa is strongly in the market for a goalie upgrade. What about the Buffalo Sabres? Um, I I just, Hellbook is intriguing because um, the return is going to have to be substantial. But but Winnipeg, frankly, is in a tight spot here. You know, Hellbook has made it clear that going into the final year, you know, if Winnipeg is going to maximize the return, then probably the time is this offseason. Because as we know, when you get into the regular season, your roster is established and it gets more tricky to make deals of this magnitude. Um, so that's a big name. But where does he fit? I, I don't I don't think he wants to stay in Canada. I think his preference is to, to go south of the border. There's a lot of people want to connect, um, you know, a, a goalie upgrade to the Buffalo Sabres. I, I, it's, it's possible, but I think Buffalo is more fixed on a, a top four defenseman. So then beyond that, where are you looking? Los Angeles. So I'm intrigued by mm-hmm. what the return might be. And then, you know, what team is going to find a way to, to step up? A lot of, a lot of people think LA there. Hey, that yeah. there would be a real yeah. fancy well, fit. Yeah. I well, mean, LA have to sound pay great on paper. Yeah. The Kings sound great on paper. I, I would love to see them go after Connor Hellbuck, but my sense from talking to someone there in LA is that they haven't set aside that much cap room for a goalie ad. And after signing Gabrikov, they're up against it again. Mm. And I think they're actually looking at trying to go out and add a more moderate name uh, to complement Phoenix Copley there in LA. So we'll see. I could be wrong about that. And, and the reason I bring this up too, is that Connor Hellebuck, I think hit and his camp, I mean, he's been one of the most consistent top five guys in the league here for the last four or five years. I think they're looking at an Andre Vasilevsky type extension is, is their starting point. And what I want to know is what team has room for that? I mean, I would make room for it because it's Connor Hellebuck, but I'm just yeah. saying that's the other shoe to drop here is you're not trading for Connor Hellebuck unless you've signed him. Right. And uh, 
who has room under the cap to sign. There's him. always ways to make room, though. Did we not learn that from Kelly McCrimmon? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, if you have depth in your organization, you can find a way to make And if work. the right guy gets hurt at just the right time, there's a way to do things, guy. <laughs> Struds, who do you keep an eye on uh, trade-wise over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, I want to qualify my answer by saying I'm not an insider, but yes. uh, the guy that I, I, I do like, and, and it seems like it's the summer of the goalies, is UC Soros down in Nashville. Mm. Um, you know, I have I have a soft spot for the little guy. That's why I like Drag so much. And, <laughs> you know, you, you think about... Uh, sorry, sorry, Drag. I, I, oh. I, I shouldn't have been... I was mean. I have uh, lost 20, 25 pounds, so I appreciate you know. <laughs> have you really? <laughs> Yeah, you good look for good. You, buddy. Look good. Doing Between that and glass is very sexy. Very M- sexy. Morning guy. burpees? What are you doing there, buds? You're looking trim, looking tight. Yeah. Um, it's a long story. So- I don't want to get into it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But my point of view is there are a lot of other goalies. You, know, you, you mentioned Hellebuck. You know, there's wristers about hard out there. Gibson down in Anaheim. And I love Soros. I remember watching him play in the World Juniors. And I'm like, who is this little guy? And why is he doing so well? Then he gets to, to learn behind uh, Pecorini in, uh, in Nashville. Mm-hmm. Everyone's kind of, oh, he's too little. He's too little. Then Pecorini leaves. And all of a sudden, boom, he becomes you know, the guy that we all think he is. And I think mm-hmm. Nashville's in a transition time, right? They're, they're a good team. But how good are they? You know, they moved Act Home out. Um, you know, they, they've still got... Um, some some decent players on decent uh, contracts for a little while, but where do you go? And if you move Soros out, you get a ton of ton of picks back, uh, and then it kind of restarts that rebuild. But he he's I I know he's gotten some attention with with Vesna's nominations, but I really like him as a goalie. I like how quiet he goes about his business. I think he'd be a name that I would really look at if I could afford him. Yeah, two years um, at five some, million left on his contract, yeah. which is yeah. reasonable and, for and his also quality. The assets yeah. and the assets, I mean, too, right? So yeah. that's yeah. a guy I'm really watching closely. I'll throw out Travis Konechny um, in part because I know the Flyers really don't need to move him. I mean, he could be part of things moving forward. But Did you say uh, something Greer, about him and the Oilers the other day? My phone exploded I, midday. Somebody said I, Pierre I did, Sam, uh, Konechny and the Oil. What are you doing to us? Oh, you know what? I, I put that in our trade board on at the Athletic. Yeah, I'm trying <laughs> did to think you? with all the different things I've been writing. Yeah, um, because I think he's the type of guy, and I, and I worded it carefully, but I think he's the type of player and contract two more years at a, a reasonable cap it where Ken Holland could actually look at that. But listen, yeah. uh, there have been a few teams that have called over the past 10 days on Travis Konechny, and I think Breer is in a, in, a, in a good leverage position here because he doesn't have to move him. He can just have teams come at him uh, knowing what value there is there, both in terms of the – the impact of the player and the contract and see who steps up. So that's the name yeah. to retain for sure. Yeah. But- I, I, I think that's fair just to, to jump in there. Um, and Scotty Lawton's name has been out there for a bit too, right? Um, those are difficult yeah. trades for Briere to make because that's a strong market. And even though the Philadelphia market has been braced for a rebuild, you still need to stay competitive. And, and those are two pieces that help keep you competitive. You know, I like the Vancouver Canucks since we're aligning players with Canadian teams. Uh, I think Rick Tockett would drive all the way to Philadelphia and pack uh, Scotty Lawton's bags to get him in a Canucks uniform. So uh, I think there's potential, there's possibility. Um, As as Pierre suggests, there's no doubt Greer is listening, um, but it's going to take a pretty sweet sort of transaction to make that fly with the Flyers. Alex Dubrinkit for me. I love the goal totals. What an interesting situation being brought into Ottawa. Maybe it's a short stay there. We'll see. But anytime there's a goal scorer like that that's floating around out there, I always think it uh, it's interesting to see who will be circling around. All right, guys, that was the breakdown brought to you by Kuma Outdoor Gear. Time now Da-da-da-da, for rapid fire. You guys didn't know this was coming, but it's coming. I'm no, throwing I it at you, Curb. Stuff. Dregs, what do you mean you hate this stuff? You love these games. This is... This is what makes us different and unique. Uh, We're like a game show. So rapid fire today, going to be brought to you by Liberty Smart Security, our good friends over there, a company that specializes in having Mm. your back, high quality advanced smart security systems for your home or your business. Liberty Smart Security uses leading edge technology to protect the things that you value most in your life. Your home is your castle and so is your business, quite frankly. If you are a business owner, and you're looking to upgrade your security around the business, they do tons of commercial work as well. So give Liberty Security a call. Rapid fire, guys. Rules are no filibustering. Pierre, I'm talking to you. Oh, boy. No filibustering. 
I'm keeping it to like 15 <laughs> to 20 seconds. Are we sorry? Are we, are we distracting okay. you from your phone there, Pierre? Pot you, uh, kettle. Uh, Pot kettle. He's working on Wordle right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, someone's. Uh... What's good. going Let's on? Let's do it. What do you got, bud? Little insider scoop on the pod here. No. What do you got? What do you got? Don't, don't share anything. It's an insider trading day, Pierre. Just give Ryan the <laughs> yeah. low hanging fruit. Yeah. That's all he needs. I, 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 got... all right. I have I'll to do bet it. Text him I, the word I have to bet it with Dregs and us. Uh, I have to bet it with Dregs and CJ before uh, we're allowed to go. With That's them. okay. Yeah. Look forward to uh, insider trading coming up later on tonight on Sports Center. Uh, That's hockey. Uh, on TSN. Okay, guys, rapid fire. Um, I don't know. We probably need to determine an order so you're not tripping all over each other. Uh, so let's go age. Uh, so I'm not sure which of the two of you seniors is older. That's Dregs, okay? Uh, so we'll go Dregs, LeBrun, and Struddy. Keep it to like 15 seconds, whatever. Uh, some of these just, questions just are ask the, the question. Let's go. Okay, here we go. Uh, evil brain of the quiz master. Uh, Vegas Cup Parade. <laughs> If you could be there, would you want to be there, Dregs? Yes, uh, just because of the atmosphere and the environment. was at the Stanley Cup final in year one of the Vegas Golden Knights, and I was pleasantly surprised at how much fun it was. Pierre, <laughs> you're up next, bud. <laughs> you yeah, get to answer I'm gonna the same say, question. I, I'm Vegas out. I, uh, I need to decompress <laughs> from Vegas. The last place alive I want to be is in that parade. Just just walking through that crowd to get to the arena before every game was an amazing scene. I mean, I got to tell you, I know a lot of Canadians are down on this championship and blah, blah, blah. What a scene in that market. Just, it's just amazing to see. Struts? I don't like parades. You stand there and the guy walks by in 10 seconds and you don't see him again. So, no, I, I'm not a parade kind of guy. Yeah, I'm the same way. No chance, Lance, is my answer. Uh, spent enough time in Vegas during the playoffs with uh, and, and enough crowds. Uh, main difference for a Flames player day-to-day -day with Ryan Huska as their head coach versus Daryl Sutter, Dregs. Main difference. <laughs> Uh, likely reciprocated communication. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that Daryl had a problem communicating with the player. He just didn't care for what the player was telling him. Back. So I think Ryan Huska will, it, it, the open door policy for Ryan Huska will actually be an open door communication process. Pierre? Yeah, I, and I think you'll see, and I'll keep this really short, but I think you'll see a willingness to play young players as the Flames evolve here uh, with their roster. Struds, you know him well. Won Memorial Cups yeah. with the man. Yeah, he rode my coattails for a couple of years, but the thing I like about him is that I, I think he's going to have uh, just um, a more um, constant kind of emotional beat. It won't be quite so high and low, and I think that those players down there after watching a couple of practices last year need that. I think the players will be respected in the media. Or from the comments that their head coach makes. I don't think we'll hear players being disrespected in the media. Tougher playoff performance, guys. Leon Dreisaitl in the high ankle sprain last year. Pretty phenomenal what he was able to do with an injury that serious. It was ugly. Aaron Ekblad and that long list of injuries that Paul Maurice went over. <laughs> insane. Or Matthew Kachuk trying to play through a, a cracked sternum. Dregs? Toughest yeah. one of those three? All tough. Uh, but... I mean... How do you differentiate? I guess if, if I have to, I would say to Aaron, Aaron Ekblad just because it's a long a laundry list. You know, I, I don't even know where the oblique is, but the fact that, that <laughs> that's because you don't have played them. through it. Well, that could be true. I don't know. Um, you know the separated <coughs> shoulders. I've dealt with that kind of stuff. I understand that. Uh, what else did he have? A uh, bad foot you yeah. know, throughout the entire playoff. So I guess I'd give the edge to Ekblad. I got to tell you, I have to play here in a couple of days there in Vegas, so I should put myself in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you did. I bet you did. Yeah, I'll go Kachuk, man. That looked painful in uh, in game four, trying to get through that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Struds, you probably experienced most of this stuff. How All about of you? it. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I'd never block shots. I got out of the way, man. That's why the goalie's got the gear on. Um, but I, I think I'm going to go Ekblad just because of the length of time he did it, right? I mean, yeah. what Leon did was incredible for like two, I'll call it two and a half rounds. You know, uh, for Kachuk, it was really only one, one and a half games. And that, and not, that sounds disrespectful, but it's not meant to be. But no. to do it for that long, just imagine how much prep time before every game Ekblad had to go through just to get his body ready to get on the ice, not even play. Yeah. Uh, percentage chance that Steve Steos is an Ottawa Senator sometime in the next 12 months. Dregs? Ooh. Ooh. 51%. Really? And, and <laughs> well, you're saying there's a um, chance. Look, yeah, well, look, I, look I, I've witnessed firsthand <clears throat> the relationship between Steve Steos and uh, New Sen's owner, Michael Landlauer. Watch it firsthand. These guys are very close. There's a high level of respect. Um, but we also know Ann Lauer isn't taking official control until August or September. Is that enough time to get to know Pierre Dorian and DJ Smith and that staff a little bit better? So I, I feel like Stales will be there eventually. So that's why I'm hedging a little bit at 51%. Pierre? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I feel like there's a fundamental objection yeah, to the question, sure. Pierre. Are we? Uh, I just, you know, I just think these questions. You got someone who's in a job right now, right? And we're trying to have fun with this, and I don't think Pierre Dorian probably appreciates this question. But um, yeah, I think there's a obviously everyone knows Steos and Ann Lauer in their history for sure. There's a decent chance he ends up there. I never so said this is the GM, first time the we've speculated. Yeah, this is the first time we've ever speculated on the future of Pierre Dorian. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no. And I never even no, said GM. Sure. I never said yeah. GM. Yeah. Just he's a member of the Ottawa Senators. Yeah. Maybe they need a good yeah. deep veteran D man. Struds. May hey, maybe he's a president of hockey ops. How do there you, know? you go, Struds? Did you? Yeah. You didn't partner with him or play with him, did you? Do you guys miss each I, other I in Edmonton? Him. Three times we played together oh, in the minors, Vancouver, and Edmonton. So, I mean, I've got a pipeline to this guy's thought process, but no, I don't. But <laughs> I, I'll say this. I think that, you know, I think that, you know, going back to a team you played for and he really had his best years here at the Oilers, I wonder how much that plays upon if there's an opportunity for him to move his career forward and get a bigger role with the team if he doesn't want to do with the team he was with uh, for, for those a lot of special times, including that incredible mm. run where he lost to Carolina. All right, uh, Matthew Kachuk, eight game-winning points in 12 Florida victories over the last couple, uh, last three rounds. Two points in their only win in the final. Tried to play with a fractured sternum. One third-place vote for the Conn Smythe by the Professional Hockey Writers Association. Dregs, fair or not enough credit? Uh, I think it's fair, but only because of, of those ahead of him. And, you know, what John Marsh so did, what Jack Eichel did – what Mark Stone did, what Aiden Hill did, right? And it's it's an incredible individual performance, everything that Matthew Kachuk contributed to the Florida Panthers, but they also lost in five games. Yep. Yeah, and it wasn't the whole PHWA, we should precise. It was 18, 18 people that voted in the Conn Smythe. Um, okay. So one third place vote out of, those, out of those 18. And, and, and to Drake's point, I struggled I struggled with the vote because I was struggling between Eichel and Marsha, so I gave it to Marsha, so I put Mark Stone third on my ballot. But, boy, Alex Petrangelo playing the most minutes, Aiden Hill, William Carlson with his shutdown role throughout the playoffs. Uh, there were a lot of performances that were worthy, and because mm. of that, listen, there are no hard, fast rules with the Conn Smythe, but over the years I've reserved a third-place vote for a losing team player only if they got to seven games in the cup final. And obviously, they only won one game in this in this final. Hmm. Strutty? I think it was fair. I mean, if you would have stopped it after three rounds, it might have been a different vote. But, uh, yeah. you know, he was on the losing team. And it's it's yeah. hard to, you know, no one's really paying attention to losing team. The stories seem to gravitate towards the other, the, the winners. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't think he really cares either, to be honest. All right. Good stuff. Good job on rapid fire today, guys. And uh, Dregs, you're going to be thrilled to hear. We have one more game we're going to play before we go. Everybody loves it. Red card, yellow card, no card. The scenario, gentlemen, is this. You get invited over to a friend's <coughs> house for dinner. You go over as a couple and it's a theme night in terms of the food that they're going to cook. Uh, so they have a nice uh, southern theme. And one of the things that they serve to the group is a homemade deep fried macaroni. Clearly a lot of effort has been put in. 
lots of different ingredients. There's a nice crusty top to it. A lot of effort has been put in. You sit down, you start enjoying the meal. You go up to the fridge and bring back the ketchup to put on the homemade macaroni. Red card, yellow card, no card. Fire away, guys. Ah, uh, go ahead, Struds. Yeah, I know what I think is no card. I know that there's, um, you know, you. I believe you can eat any, something any way you want. It's like a steak. You know, I like mine medium plus. My wife jumps down my throat and almost chokes me every time I order it that way. And I'm like, babe, I, the customer is always right, right? The customer is always right. So I think the way you like it is right. So, uh, yeah, I, I can live with it. Not so guess, insulting no to the card. chef? Not insulting at all to the chef? I mean, ketchup uh, well, is it, a pretty, it's a blunt object, ketchup. It's not like a fine accoutrement. <laughs> it's like a, you're basically saying, I prefer the taste of ketchup to whatever you put in front of me. You yeah. want your, your guests to enjoy their meal. All right. Yeah. That's the job of a host. Dregs? Yeah, I mean, what if they ask for hot sauce? I mean, what's the difference? I mean, you're just adding a little <laughs> bit of, of flavor to it. So I'm saying no card. I grew up in a house where my older brother put ketchup on everything, like pierogies, you name it, like everything. Ketchup in his soup, he would squirt oh, ketchup. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. I'm, I'm telling Ugh. you. No, I'm telling you. So... I, you know what, would I do it at a, at a five-star restaurant? Probably not. I'm not, I'm, I'm not offended by it. I probably wouldn't do it at a dinner party. Come on, like, please. No Doesn't big matter. deal. Pierre, no. you still awake there, Pierre, or on your phone? Or yeah, I'm, I'm hanging in there. Um, I'll go yellow card because I think, I think, I think it's a bit tacky. By the way, Strud's like steak, you got to eat a steak rare. You're in Alberta for God's sakes. I know. Come on. No, I know. I, I, I won't go on that rant. I won't go on that rant. Uh, no, I, and by the way, if you're going to put anything on macaroni and cheese, it should be uh, hot sauce. Yeah. Mm. Point. Mm. Hot sauce and macaroni. Yeah. yeah. I was the one that did it. Uh, so I'm going no card. Uh, I agree with you, Struds. You go somewhere for dinner, you should be able to, you know, kind of eat it the way you want it. I will say I did feel yeah. bad. So, so Brandy, yeah. thank you for the wonderful macaroni and no offense uh, that I dropped no. a half liter of ketchup onto it. Yep. The red card is you going into their fridge. Yeah. That's the red card. Yeah. If you, I didn't if want you to ask, ask in front say, of everybody. Have any but then I got to interrupt the yeah. conversation and be like, can I have some ketchup? Well, you know what, what if mean? you see something in that fridge that you, they didn't want you to see? I don't know. They, they <laughs> what the hell is in like, your I mean, fridge, Dregs? Yeah. You know, no, like, no, seriously. Like, well, like while you're at it, why don't you maybe take out some pickled eggs or something? I mean, I don't know. While you're in like, are, are you going to the bathroom and going through their medicine cabinet? And, that is not and the and same else? thing. Like, what else is going that on? That is here? not the same thing. Medicine cabinet. Is there a bathroom and... upstairs? Maybe I can go into your master bedroom and look through the underwear drawers. Uh, like, all, right. all right. Red card, yellow card, no card. Great job on the podcast today, guys. Well, a couple of you. Yep, Pierre, we're glad you just made it through in one piece, buddy. Uh, but before we go, Dregs, we did have kind of a, I don't know, if an announcement? Is it like a da-da-da-da? Um, no, but it's something, not a da-da-da-da. It's not a da-da-da-da. <laughs> it's just kind of a thing. Um, yeah, anyways, just thing. wanted to, uh, I'll, I'll let you kind of flesh it out, Dregs. But basically, uh, we're super pumped as three Got Your Back Originals, Pierre Strud's and I, that uh, the Ray and Dregs mm -hmm. Hockey Podcast is going to become uh, a part of the Got Your Back podcast network, which we are really uh, amped mm. up and excited about, buddy. More Rashog, LeBron, Struds for Darren Drager and Ray Ferraro. Yeah, uh, I mean, we're excited by it. Um, you know, the opportunity to, to develop and continue to grow an empire under Rev Media uh, is exciting for, for Ray and I. I mean, for anyone who who uh, downloads and subscribes to uh, Ray and Dregs, I don't think that much is going to change. Right. Um, but... You know, you guys do great stuff. And, you know, we fell in love like so many people did with the Got Your Back kind of theme, right? So that was uh, that was a big lure for both Ray and I. But we also had a lot of fun under the, the title of Go Goat Sports uh, out of Vancouver. So tough decision to make, but we feel for the growth of the pod, it's the right one. Well, now, the guys have a boss that. now. Yeah. Right? So, you got a new boss, Dreg, so old Chagra will be evaluating. I expect the quality of your podcast to go up. Yeah. <laughs> well, Struds, Struds, you don't mind the bi-weekly review emails that I send, right? Like, Ray, and I'm sure Ray will be fine with that, Dregs, when I every second podcast send him a, a, you know, a review on how he's doing. 
Yeah, and and look, there's a quota on calls and text messages. <laughs> I'm already and filled it me, for the year. It's, it, yeah, it's 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 less than five uh, per week, let alone five per day. Uh, Pierre, are you sleeping in place good. there? Well, no, I'm just going to say, doesn't this transaction still require Board of Governors approval? Or It does. <laughs> yeah, it's going to go to the competition committee and, and we'll see. Uh, listen, the benefits are garbage. Uh, the pension plan is garbage, but the Christmas parties are great. So Ray and Dregs, welcome to uh, Rev Media and the Got Your Back Podcast Network. Thrilled to have you, buddy, and thanks for joining us today. Okay, guys, thank you. All right. That'll wrap the podcast, folks. Thanks to the fellas for joining us. And a big thanks to our sponsors as well. Cross Country Canada Supplies and Rentals, Kuma Outdoor Gear, and Liberty Smart Security. We'll chat real soon, folks. Cheers. We want to tell you about a truly Canadian company. Cross Country Canada Supplies and Rentals provides equipment and supplies to all facets of the Canadian construction industry, But what sets them apart is their get-or-done attitude. It's a core value of their company. I've been to the offices. I've seen how they proudly display that on the wall at each branch. Every one of the staff members lives by the get-or-done formula to ensure they'll never let their customers down. They'll bend over backwards to get their clientele what they need when they need it. They don't make excuses. Cross Country Canada takes great pride in this attitude and they truly believe that the success of their customer is their success. You can't get much more Canadian than that. By the way, does anybody want to talk about...